Hi, Mike Ken again with Introduction to Visual Basic. This example is going to talk about multiple forms. Windows are called forms in Visual Basic. Let me get this program launched. I'm going to double click on the Solution Explorer. I'd already downloaded the example and unzipped it. So in this form, I want to show you over here in the Solution Explorer, I've got an About box, two windows the program uses, Form 1 and Form 2, and a splash screen. So a splash screen is a little window that pops up when the program first runs to show the user the program started before it's completely loaded. It also gives information about you know who wrote the program, what version it is, all that kind of stuff. So here, Form 1, the main form, has two buttons and two menu options, Exit and About. So About is going to trigger the splash screen, not the splash screen, is going to trigger the About box and the splash screen is just going to pop up automatically when the program starts. And then I've got these two buttons right here that are going to pop up the second window and the window is either going to be popped up what we call modal or non-modal. So modal means when the second window pops up, you can't go back to the first window until you're done with the second window. Now you've seen this behavior with the message box dot show. It pops up an error message and the user's got to hit OK before they're allowed to go back to their program. Non-modal means they're completely separate windows. They're both running at the same time. I can click on one. I can switch back to the other without closing the first one. Let's watch the program run now. So I'll hit start. There's my splash screen. Here's my program. I can hit File Menu About and get some exciting information about my program. Hit OK. I can hit Form 2 Modal and it pops up Form 2 and you'll see it took what was on Form 1 out of the name text box, put it on Form 2. It took what was in the amount box and put it on Form 2. And then in a label, it displayed the grand total. And the grand total is a module level variable, a form level variable that is actually dimmed on form one. Now, this is modal. So if I try to click back on form one, it won't let me leave form two until I decide to hit OK or cancel. Now, if I hit OK, it's going to take whatever's in these boxes and send it back to form one. So let's, let's change this. Let's make this Bubba, and let's change the amount to 942, and hit OK. So now we're back on Form 1, and you can see now it says Bubba Smith, and you can see the amount has changed to 942. Now, as opposed to if I hit Show Form 2 Non-Modal, once again, when it does that, it still copies the information from Form 1 to Form 2, but now they're completely separate windows. I can switch between the two at will. I've still got to hit OK or Cancel to close this window and I'll go ahead and hit Cancel. I'm going to go back to Show Form to Modal, change my data here to something completely different and change it here to something completely different here and if I hit Cancel these changes will not come back to Form 1. Now, last of all, on Form 2, I have zero grand total. So this is going to blank out the label on Form 2, but more importantly, it's going to set the form level variable on Form 1 back to zero. So I'm going to hit OK here. I'm going to close the program down. And let's get into the particulars of this program. Now, let me show you how to add splash screens and about boxes to your project. First thing we have to do is go to Project, Add Window Form. And it's going to give me a list of choices. And I want to add an About Box. Now you see right here, it's going to call it About Box 2. The first About Box you add, it's going to call it About Box 1. Now since I already have an About Box on my project, it's going to make it number 2. Now I can name it anything I want right here. I could just change the name. But I'll just leave it. I'll just say Add. Now I could go back to Project, Add Windows Form, and if I scroll down further, you'll see a splash screen. Now once again, in, in this case, it's going to call it Splash Screen 2 because I already had a splash screen called Splash Screen 1. I hit Add. So now 
you see over here I've got my about boxes and my splash screens so how do you make a splash screen show up well we got to do a couple things first thing we got to do is bring up the project properties. so if I click right here on simple multiple forms right click and say properties that will bring up my project properties now let me show you another way to do that you go over here to the project menu and you say simple multiple forms properties so that's the properties of this project now the first thing you need to do if you're going to have an about box or a splash screen is click right here on assembly information and this is where you fill out the name of the project if you want it to be different from what you name the project this is the name the user will see you give it a description you say the company you know Acme 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 Incorporated you can say any copyright information you can create the version number I'll call it 1.0.4.2 and I'm gonna hit OK so we need to set these settings I could set if I had a trademark so that's what's gonna show up on my about box and that's what's gonna show up on my splash screen now how do you choose your splash screen if I scroll all the way down here at the bottom you see it says splash screen splash splash screen one all right well, you try to say that three times fast splash screen is kind of a tongue twister I'm gonna hit my drop down now and you can see these are all the windows I have on my project so I could choose splash screen two instead of splash screen one but let, let's go back to one in fact now that you've seen how to add a splash screen actually I don't need two splash screens on this project so I'm going to come over here to splash screen 2 right click on it and say bye bye I'm gonna delete that from my project and I'm gonna do the same thing with about box 2 I'm gonna right click on it and delete it now I've gotten rid of them you're about the way you make your about pop up is you have to write code you have to write a line of code to show that window and it's got an OK button on it that will hide that window so now let's look at the code for how we do the about box that was file menu about I'm gonna double click on about right here and it's actually very easy all I have to do is write a line of code that says about box one that's the name of that form show dialog that will make the window appear and since I'm saying show dialog the about box is popping up modal that's how you make something pop up modal you say show dialog as opposed to show okay let's go back to form one and let's begin to look at the code that gets me from form one to form two I'm gonna double click on show form two modal so now that I've opened up the code window you can see button modal dot click or underscore click first thing I'm gonna do is do a try catch to get the amount out of the text property of the text box I'm gonna parse it as a decimal and I'm gonna plus equal I'm gonna add it to the grand total so let me scroll up to the top of the code window and you'll see up here I've got des grand total as decimal but instead of saying dim I said friend now there's three words we can use here when we create a module level variable I can say friend that means this variable can be seen on every single form on this entire project I can say private which means it's only seen on form one and I can also say dim dim is the same as private so usually most books in Visual Basic they'll use the word dim but just remember that means the same as private so here I'm gonna add whatever they put into the text box to the grand total if it's not a number I'm gonna give them an error message and I'm gonna clear out the I'm gonna put the focus back in txt amount and I'm gonna exit sub if we get past that here's the line of code that puts txt name onto form 2 so on form 1 it's called txt name that's the name of my text box the name of my text box on form 2 is txt stuff 
So I'm just saying take the text property of txt1, put it into the text property of txt stuff, but look what I had to do. I had to add onto the front of it form1, not form1, form2 dot. That means txt stuff is on form2. So I did the same thing here. I took the amount value that was in the, te the text property of txt amount and I sent it to form2 into my other text box on form2 called other stuff. Now here's how I actually fired off form2. I said show dialog which is going to make it modal. But you see here I have it bringing back a dialog result. That's another thing I'll show you on form2 how I can either send back OK or cancel to see which of the two buttons on form2 the user hit. So if they hit OK I'm going to go grab the stuff on form2 and pull it back to form1. So what did I do to bring it from form2 to form1? Well right here I said form1 dot then the name of the text box on form2 dot text. So here I'm just reversing it. Here I'm pulling the data from form2 back to form1. Up here I'm sending the data from form1 to form2. So you can go either direction. If you don't put anything in front of a control's name, it assumes it's the current form. It's So I'm putting it back on form 1 because this code is running on form 1. Now, let me call up form 2. And I am going to double click on the OK button of form 2. So in the OK button of form 2, Look what I'm doing. I'm saying me.dialog result. That means form 2's dialog result is going to be OK. And then I say me.hide. Now I'm hiding the form rather than unloading it or closing it because I'm going to use it again. So it's just going to be kept in RAM, but it's not visible. Now, that's a lot to type right there. But if I say me.dialog result equals it gives me the choices and I can just click on the one I want. I can double click on it and I don't have to type all that in. If the user hits the cancel button, look what I do. All I do in the cancel button is set the dialog result to cancel and say me.hide. So I'm either going to send back OK or I'm going to send back cancel to form 1. Now the Another thing I want to show you on Form 2 is how I zero the grand total. So let me open up that button. So look what I do. I just say label grand total dot text equals, now I put a string in it for zero, but look what I do right here. I say Form 1 dot desk grand total equals zero. That means go to the grand total variable on Form 1 and set its value to zero. Now watch what happens when I go to type this. Let's just say I'm typing form1 dot. Now here's all the things I can see on form1. I'm going to say DEC. Oh, there it is, grand total. So I could see desk grand total on from form1, right? So there, there it is. Now, I'm going to deliberately do something here. I'm going to go back to form1. I'm going to come back up to the top here. And instead of making this friend, I'm going to make it private. Go back to form 2, open up my zero. Now look, I'm getting an error message. Multiple forms, form 1, desk grand total is not accessible in this context because it is private. So that's why I had to make it friend so form 2 could access it. And as a matter of fact, if I erase this and I go form 1 dot DEC, it doesn't exist anymore on, I can't see it from form 2. So let's go back and fix that because we do want to be able to see the grand total on both forms. So up here that needs to be friend. Now you'll see the error we had on form 2. It's not going to be there anymore. I can say desk grand total equals 0. So you got to make a variable on one form. You, instead of saying dim, you say friend if you want it to be seen throughout your program. If you only want it to be seen on the current form, you say either private 
or dim. Now let's look at one more thing on Form 2. And I'm just going to double click in the open area of Form 2. And that's going to bring up an event called Form Load. Form 2 Load. So the load event happens once the very first time that form ever gets loaded into memory. The very first time that form is show, has a show or show dialog, the load event gets triggered. Now, form activate, every single time form 2 appears, it runs this code. So this is once, this is every time it pops up. So look what I'm doing right here on form 2 activated. I'm saying label grand total equals, where am I getting the data from? Form 1, what am I getting? Desk grand total. I've got to turn it into a string in currency format, and I'm going to put it on the local label. So you can push data to another form before you pop it up, or you can pull data from the other form once it has popped up. You see, this is the activated event. And I do believe that is everything I need to tell you about this program. So let me produce this video and get it out there for you to see.